Greetings, everyone. We are going to talk about what, what I think is a really exciting topic, and that is immunotherapy in lung cancer. It's funny, it wasn't that long ago when this was thought to be an impossibility, you know, the idea that we could use the immune system to treat a cancer like lung cancer. I mean, even 10 years ago, we thought, no way that's going to be possible. And now, um, I would argue it is probably the most important breakthrough in treatment of lung cancer in my career. So the concept with immunotherapy is basically what it sounds like. We're trying to get your own immune system to fight the cancer like it was a virus. And if you think about how cancer, whether it's lung cancer, breast cancer, or any kind of cancer develops, it really develops because a genetic mistake happened in the DNA of the cancer, which changed the programming of what was previously a normal cell to now one that's growing too fast and not dying enough and doing all the things that cancer does. And so the characteristic that separates a cancer cell from a non-cancer cell is these genetic mistakes, these mutations that have occurred in the cancer cells. Now, those mutations, these mutated genes, produce proteins that are different from our normal cells. I mean, as different really as a bacteria or a virus would be. And so one question would be, if we have these abnormal proteins that don't look like our normal cells, and we have an immune system that is designed to look for things that don't look like normal cells and kill them off, why doesn't our immune system wipe them out before they ever get a chance to set up shop? We think that that probably does happen. So there are times when our immune systems have probably saved us by killing off a cell that was going to become a cancer cell very early on. But when a cancer has gone to the point where we can diagnose it, fundamentally, our immune system has failed us. And so I think one of the questions that we've always struggled with is, is why does that happen? And while we don't have all of this solved, one of the most important observations was that there are proteins present in both our normal cells and in some cancer cells that basically put the brakes on our immune system, basically allows these cells to tell our immune system hands off because these are normal cells and we don't wanna kill them off. And so what we've discovered, and this is really important in lung cancer, is that lung cancer cells can mimic our normal cells and trick our immune systems into thinking that they shouldn't be attacked. And so um, this concept and identification of how cancer cells evade our immune system has led to some really important breakthroughs in our ability to harness that immune system to kill the cancers off. Naomi, can you talk a little bit about how immunotherapy for lung cancer works and how we test for it? Sure. So first, we're going to talk about uh, what we call immune checkpoints. So the most important ones and the ones that we use every day in clinical practice right now are two, one called PDL1 and one called CTLA4. Currently, we test for PDL1 in all lung cancers. It's a very, very important piece of information that we absolutely need to make the best treatment decisions for people. And that's done by looking at a, a biopsy or a piece of the tumor um, and looking at the cells and seeing how many of, of the cells have this PDL1 characteristic. And we talk about them as a percentage of um, the cancer cells that have PDL1. So, for example, your physician might talk about PDL1 as 50% or PDL1 as 10% or less than 1% or 100%. So, that's how we talk about it. And that's important information for treatment decisions because. We actually base whether, um, for example, a, a patient might require chemotherapy as part of treatment or not based on that PDL1 characteristic. And oftentimes for a cancer that's spread, for example, um, what we call metastatic, and where the PDL1 uh, is present in, in many of the tumor cells, at least 50% or more, a person might not need chemotherapy at all in the beginning. So I'll point out, we also do not test for CTLA. We only test for the PDL1. 